changed the face of politics. And they've seen incredible new people elected to the state senate uh, who weren't there before, to the state rep, uh, the House of Representatives here in Santa Fe, to city council. I mean, really, they've had a big impact on them. Oh, great. I can see this. Could you just hold that? Yeah, sure. Just focus it on. Okay. <laughs> on the quality of candidates across the spectrum and what we've seen in, in New Mexico in recent years. And I think it's worth thinking about some of the things that all of you have made possible in the last 19 20 months. Uh, when I was sworn in at the very beginning of January in 2009, um, I'm very proud that one of the first things we addressed was the Lilly Ledbetter decision that the U.S. Supreme Court made. Uh, I really think it was one of the two, along with Citizens United, one of the two absolutely worst Supreme Court decisions in the last 50 years. And even before President Obama was inaugurated, on the 20th, we were moving that legislation through the House of Representatives, through the Senate, to say um, it's not, this was a wrong decision. I mean, what the Supreme Court basically said was you can pay a man and a woman two different wages for the same job if you hide it really well for the first few months. I mean, that's, that's how fundamentally uh, unequal and misguided their decision was. And we came right out of the gate and passed the better and fix that. And as the president was inaugurated um, later in January, I, I was very happy to see that he was willing to take on the toughest vested interests in Washington right out of the gate. Um, when he said we're going to take on consumer debt, consumer credit, and the credit card companies as our very first act, uh, it, it set some people back on their heels in Washington. I think a lot of people didn't expect that. And I can tell you Having been there for a year and a half now, I, I have seen how powerful the army of special interests and lobbyists around the financial industry is. And to see the credit card companies not get their way for the first time in, in a decade or so was really, it, it sent the message to me that this was a president and a Congress who were serious about not just tinkering around the edges, but taking on some of the tough issues. And I can tell you, you know, I, I was a city councilor, and my typical phone calls when I was on the city council were about potholes. They were about trash that didn't get picked up. They were about zoning issues. The phone rang off the hook in 2009 about credit cards because of the things that were possible, legal, in those huge, voluminous page after page in small print uh, where the credit cards could do things like what they like to call a universal default where you're late on somebody else's bill, so they use that to jack up your interest rate from 11% to 27%. Those kinds of things were happening with people I knew, people on my staff, people who were calling for help. And to, to see the president take that on, the Congress to pass that legislation, and then for him to come out to New Mexico to talk about just how important it is, I think set, set the right stage. Because there were a lot of things in our economy um, and, and if you go back and look at the dive in terms of the job numbers and how it, it bottomed out right as, as we were all coming into office and beginning to work on the economy, um, there were a lot of fundamental problems. It wasn't just what happened precipitously at the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009 that resulted in $13 trillion of our money disappearing from the economy. Um, there were a lot of fundamental problems with credit cards. There were fundamental problems with mortgages. And, and you saw this Congress and this President stand up to the Wall Street banks and pass not only Wall Street reform, but mortgage reform at the same time. And make many of the worst practices that were, um, when you see people losing their homes, when you see foreclosures like I did uh, on the Southwest Mesa here in Albuquerque, oftentimes behind the story, was um, were some of these subprime loans, uh, mortgages where people were actually getting bonuses in this country to write somebody you know, to a more expensive mortgage than what they qualify for. So it was actually legal to say, you know, when you, you qualify for a 5.7% mortgage, but we're going to give a bonus to somebody who doesn't tell you that and write you into a 7% those kinds of things are illegal today. And, and they were terrible for the entire mortgage, the, the 
incredible mortgage industry, the credible realty industry, the credible home builders, and they undermined our entire economy. Um, this was a, a Congress and a president that was willing to take on the toughest issue of the last hundred years, health care reform, uh, to take it on directly and pass legislation that says, for the first time in our country's history, your, your insurance company can't kick you off after you get sick. They can't rescind your coverage just because uh, suddenly you did develop cancer, you did get sick somehow, and then after the fact, they're going to go back and find a way to take that away from you. Um, it, it said that people who have things like diabetes and heart conditions ought to be able to buy health insurance. That's not a radical idea. That is a basic, fundamental way to extend health care. And so an enormous amount of work has been done over the last 18 months. And if you look at it in a historical context, uh, context it's probably been the most productive uh, session of Congress since, since LBJ was president. But because we are still struggling with providing the jobs because of this incredible recession that President Bush put us into um, by turning the Wall Street banks loose with no oversight whatsoever, uh, by allowing predatory mortgages uh, to be the law of the land, by allowing ridiculous cons uh, practices within the credit card industry that led to so much consumer debt in our country. Until we recover the jobs in this country so that every New Mexican, every American who wants to find work can find work, we're going to have a challenge. It's going to be tough in this election cycle because we have a lot more to do on the economy. Um, when you look at where we've come from, you understand what a hole they put us into. Eight million jobs lost. If it wouldn't have been for the Recovery Act, uh, the estimate it would, is that it would have been over 16 million jobs lost. That would have been 16% unemployment. Can you imagine what this country would look like with 16% unemployment? We were losing 750,000 jobs a month uh, at the end of the Bush administration. And today, we're frustrated because we only saw 1.6% growth in the GDP and the jobs added weren't as big uh, in recent months as any of us would like. We need to continue that progress forward. It, it's important to realize that some people want to take our country back. We want to take our country forward. We're going to do that. And if you ask, um, in, recent, in recent weeks, it's been very clear what the other side of the aisle wants to do. Um, Pete Sessions made the, the mistake of coming clean on me the press a few weeks ago. When they said, you know what you're against, you articulated that very clearly for the last year and a half, what are you for? And, and he used the phrase, exact same agenda. We need to go back to the exact same agenda as when the Republicans controlled the House of Representatives. And we had leadership like Tom DeLay. And we had a guy named George W. Or George W. Bush in the White House. That, that would take us back. And if you think about what's at stake, and whether they're serious about that when they say we want to go back to the exact same agenda, listen to John Boehner. He would be, let's, let's hope the, the, the adjective speaker and the, the name Boehner never go together in anything but a hypothetical sentence. But if they were to win back the House of Representatives, John Boehner would be speaker. Now, he has said we need to repeal health care. Not just tweak it here or there, and this part doesn't work, but you know, if you repeal health care, and my opponent has said we need to repeal health care, what are we doing? We're going back to the times when the insurance companies run the show. We're going back to putting the donut hole back in Medicare Part D for our seniors. We're going back to when, when insurance companies could say, well, after you get sick, we're going to rescind your coverage. He said we need to repeal the Wall Street reform bill. You know, we don't need to be looking out over the shoulders of AIG or Goldman Sachs, you know. It's not like anything nefarious was going on there. It's not like there was systemic risk or maybe these little things called credit default swaps that even the smartest people in the finance world couldn't describe to you if you gave them a week to do it. But in addition, when they have their opportunity to write the alternative budget to what the president suggested, and you've got a guy named Paul Ryan who would actually be if they were to win back the House, Paul Ryan would be in charge of the budget committee. And what are his priorities? What was the Republican alternative budget? Privatize Social Security, turn Medicare into a voucher program. Now, these are ideas that were completely repudiated by the American people back in 2005, before they lost the House. Um, they were repudiated in elections in 2006 and resulted in some of the 
change um, that we were all working for in 2006. And yet they want to go back to that. You got, you got John Boehner who, when you put those things together, you realize he wants to take all the oversight away from the Wall Street banks and then hand your retirement over to him. That's a pretty good deal if you're in the, if you're in the New York financial industry. It's not such a great deal if you've worked all your life paying into Medicare, paying into uh, Social Security so that you can have a middle class retirement. I can tell you, my parents, they both spent their entire career working for companies, uh, planning for their retirement, but oftentimes because of the decisions their companies made, uh, the, the, the private portion of their retirement was never as big as it was advertised at the front end. And if it weren't for their Social Security, they wouldn't be living a middle class, respectable retirement the way they are today. Um, we need to fight for those things. We can't take our country back to that. And the way we do that is we can draw a line in the sand in New Mexico. Because they cannot take over the House of Representatives without coming to New Mexico. They need to win Harry Teague's seat. They need to win my seat to be able to take over the House of Representatives. And if they fail in this year, when every environmental factor you can imagine is working in their direction, I think you will see have seen the, 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 the apex moment of the Republican Party. Because they are, they're attacking their own at this point. They're taking the most reasonable, the most proactive, the, the good legislators within their, their own party, and they're punishing them in the primary process. You know, in the House, Jim, I'm next to a guy named Bob Inglis. We don't agree on a lot of things. He came in in 1994 with the New Gingrich Revolution. Um, he's not exactly, uh, I wouldn't call him a moderate, much less open to some of the issues on the, on the more progressive side of the spectrum. He just lost his primary because he wasn't angry enough. He wasn't extreme enough. That's what's happening on the other side. And if we can hold on, House of Representatives through this cycle, to the Senate through this cycle, there is so much more work to be done on clean energy legislation that we haven't seen go through the Senate yet, on fi fixing the Citizens United decision, the other of, of two of the most fundamentally misguided Supreme Court decisions in the last 50 years. Um, immigration reform, the list goes on and on. You know, we can get those things done, but only if we're able to, to hang on to a functional majority continue to rebuild our economy in this country uh, in a way so that when my kids grow up here, if they, uh, if they decide to go off someplace else, so be it. If they want to grow up in Albuquerque and work here, they ought to be able to find a good job and raise their kids with quality education. We can build that kind of a future here in New Mexico if we can survive this election cycle. That's why I need help from all of you to continue the progress that we've built on so far. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that um, we haven't agreed on absolutely everything, but I will not shrink from difficult decisions. It, and if I disagree with you, I'm going to have a reason for it. And we're going to get good things done for Central New Mexico as a result. We have just started. And imagine if we can then go into 2012 in a presidential year with President Barack Obama at the top of the ticket and rebuild some of those numbers to, to be able to American agenda for So thank you all for coming out tonight. Thanks for the work that you've done for the last seven years. Um, we've got our work cut out for us, but I believe we're going to get the job done.